Finally, there's a looper pedal that works specifically with the Spark amps. Hey guys, I'm Dave from Guitars Ready Hero, and today we're taking a close look at the U Looper pedal from the team at Exonic Audio, a new fun tool for those of you using any of Positive Grid's Spark amps. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Now, if you've ever tried using a traditional looper pedal with any of these amps, or any amp without an FX sended return for that matter, you've probably encountered a problem. You lay down a loop with a clean tone, switch to a distorted lead tone to improvise, only to find that your original loop morphed into something unrecognizable. Now this is due to the lack of a dedicated send and return on the Spark amps that you usually find on gigging amps. If you're happy looping and improvising on one single tone, then a standard looper pedal is fine with the Spark amps. But if you want to mix things up, it can be frustrating. So the U-Looper can solve this issue, allowing you to maintain your original loops tone while freely exploring the vast tonal landscape of your Spark amp. So let's take a quick listen. <laughs> So currently the U-Looper supports just the positive grid spark range, but I've been told that they're looking to expand its compatibility to other amps without a send and return, such as the Boss Katana 50 or the Yamaha THR series. So in this video, we'll explore how it works because it is a little different to a regular looper pedal. Then the limitations of this pedal, as it does function a little differently across the different spark models. So it's very important that you watch that section. And finally, who would enjoy this pedal? So let's dive right in. First off, let's take a look at the U-Looper's design and connections. The U-Looper has a very minimalistic design. You can power it via the USB-C port using any standard 5 volt 1 amp power source. Alternatively, you can use a standard 9 volt DC power supply too. To the right is the USB-A port, and this is where you'll connect the U-Looper to your Spark amp. There's one single volume control here, which will control the level of the loop and the level of the line out. It's also worth mentioning that this is a pre-production unit. So the level knob here is a little bit different to the one that you'll actually get. We have the main foot switch used to start, stop and record your loop. And finally, there's a line out jack to the left here that you can use to send all your audio to another speaker or audio interface. This input jack to the right is currently not in use, but it is reserved for potential updates in the future. So with that said, these two jacks aren't the input and output you'd find on a typical looper pedal. You do not connect any leads from your guitar or amp to these jacks. Now let's take a look at connecting the U-Looper to your Spark setup. I'm demonstrating this using the Spark Mini, but the setup should be similar if you're using a Spark Go, Spark Mini, 40, or Live. So first off, provide a power source for the pedal. I'm simply using an iPhone charger brick into the U-Looper USB-C port. Next, turn on your Spark amp and make sure you disconnect the Bluetooth audio from your phone. You can still use the Bluetooth for tone controls or even the AirStep Spark as a foot switch to change between tones. Next, connect your Spark amp to the USB-A port on the U-Looper. The cool thing about the U-Looper is that it also passes power through to the amp as well, so you can actually charge your Spark Mini and Go whilst using the U-Looper. Finally, have your guitar plugged into your Spark amp, and that's it, we're ready to loop. Note that you do not plug your guitar directly into the pedal. So let's record a loop. A blue LED means that the looper is blank and ready to record. So tap it to record, and when the LED is red, that means you're recording. Tap it again to stop, and the LED will be green to signal the loop playback. Tap again if you want to add an overdub, and the LED will turn yellow. Tap again to stop recording in overdub. And at this point, you can improvise or change tones without affecting your original loop. Now double tap the pedal to stop the loop, and double tap and hold to clear the loop. 
Now, in terms of getting our volume levels set for the looper, it's worth noting that the playback volume of your recorded loop from your Spark amp can be adjusted at two points in this system. First is on the pedal itself. And the second point of control is on the amp, the music volume control. As a general guide, start with both set at about nine to 12 o'clock when you're recording and you can adjust as you go. Now, the only exception to this is with the Spark Go. As the Spark Go's music controls only affect the Bluetooth audio, not the USB audio. So in this case, your only volume control for the loop is on the pedal. Note that these two control points are for the loop playback volume only, not the recorded level. For the recorded volume, that's a different thing entirely. So let's talk a little bit more about the recorded volume because I think it's important to understand how this device is actually working. The U-Looper is essentially acting like a computer and takes advantage of the Spark's USB recording to record a loop onto the device and then uses the Spark speaker as the audio playback speaker. So with that said, the output knob for the guitar on your Spark has absolutely no effect on the actual volume of the recorded loop. Let me demonstrate. So even if I turn the output of the guitar on my Spark speaker all the way down to zero, there's still technically a signal being generated and sent to the USB out. So the U-Looper will pick that up regardless of the guitar volume set on the Spark amp. Let me demonstrate. So let's say you recorded a loop and even with your playback volume on the looper and amp set at full, it's still quieter than what you would like. Well, that probably means that your recorded volume was too low. So if you want to get a bit more volume in your recorded signal, then you'll have to do so on the master volume control of the amp in the Spark app. With the recorded guitar level up higher, that should give you a stronger recorded loop and that way you can dial back the pedal volume and the spark music volume during playback. So I've got a clean tone here. Let's just record a quick loop. All right, so it's pretty quiet. And even if I boost the level on the U-Looper, it's gonna be fairly quiet. So in order to get a recorded signal that's louder, I would go into the Spark app and turn up the master volume on that particular patch. Now that master volume doesn't affect the tone, it just affects how loud that tone is. And you'd get a better signal by just adjusting it that way. On the other hand, if you're recording a tone and if it's too loud, you're hearing clipping and some distortion, then you do the opposite. You go into the Spark app and you turn that master volume down. And that will ensure that the recorded volume is at an acceptable level that's not distorting. Now, one concern that some players might have is that if the USB port on the Spark is taken, then how will it be possible to use the Spark to record their guitar? If you use the headphone jack slash line out on the amps for the 40 Go and the Mini, that also mutes the speaker, which we don't want. Well, that's where the line out feature on the U-Looper comes in handy. So in this setup that I have, I'll have the line out going to my recording interface to record my Spark but I can still hear my Spark speaker, which is great. In the first demo of the video, that audio was all recorded from the line out. So if you wanna hear that, just jump back and listen again. When I tested the line out with my range of Spark amps, it worked great with the Spark Go and the Spark Mini. On the Spark 40 and Live, it worked, but I encountered a very slight buzzing in the line out, which I believe might be more to do with the dirty power in my house wall sockets as those are both powered using AC power. And, and when I used an external power source to power my Spark 40 or Live, like a portable battery station, this issue didn't occur. So I think it might just depend on the power point you're using. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the limitations of this U-Looper as it's a great tool and workaround for this problem, but it's not perfect for every Spark. The U-Looper works with the Spark 40. However, you may encounter a slight detune or chorus sound when you play back your loops. It's not an absolute deal breaker as it still allows you to record with one tone and improvise with another, but your loop will almost sound like it has a chorus effect added to it. So here's a loop on the Spark 40. 
Unfortunately, this is a limitation of the Spark 40 itself. If you use the Spark 40 as a USB interface on a normal computer, you will probably run into a similar detuning or wobble sound. So that's not something that the U-Looper or the Tiemann X audio can fix in future updates. It's a Spark 40 specific issue that is widely known. Now the next limitation or thing to note is that you may experience very minor latency on overdubs using the Spark 40, Mini and Go. The latency is only very small, but certainly it could annoy some players if overdubbing is something that is super important for them, especially if your riff and overdub is super rhythmic as opposed to something simple and chord based. I've been told that this is something the team at Exonic may be able to fix and accommodate on their end in the future though, so it could potentially be resolved, but I thought it was worth mentioning. This latency issue isn't a problem though on the Spark Live, as the Spark Live features enhanced processing capabilities, so you shouldn't run into any issues there. The overdubs will be perfectly in time with the Spark Live. The Spark Live also features multiple channels and vocal capabilities, so you can implement guitar, vocal, and bass all into the same loop if you wanted to using the U-Looper. Okay, so overall, the U-Looper is a wonderful solution for Spark users who want to loop with one tone and then have the flexibility to change to another tone. At 99 US dollars as well, I think they've priced it quite affordably. It is somewhat limited in some cases by the hardware of the Spark amps themselves, as I mentioned earlier, but overall, it does what it claims to do. If you're happy looping and improvising using one single tone, then I don't think you need the U-Looper. A regular looper pedal will do, but the U-Looper solves the looping tone problem that many have faced, and it's a much better solution than the other ones that I've seen online, like using Loopy HD, for example. Again, as I mentioned at the start of this video, they're also looking at implementing this to work with other amps without an FX send and return like the Boss Katana 50 or the Yamaha THR. So for those players, stay tuned. To find out more about the U-Looper, please check the links below. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.